Welcome to the Lighting Your Way podcast. This season, our sixth, we're talking to my colleagues at Guardian Nurses about how they help our patients navigate a very complex and confusing healthcare maze. At the end of each episode, you'll hear their suggestion as to how you can become an advocate for yourself and your loved ones. My mom used to repeat the idiom that you can't judge a book by its cover, meaning you shouldn't judge someone or something based only on what you see on the outside or only on what you perceive without knowing the situation. Unfortunately, judging patients by how they appear, like when they have lots of tattoos, happens more than anyone would likely admit. In this episode, I talk with my colleague, Samantha Salerno, who tells a powerful story about how a patient's care was impacted by his appearance. Welcome to the podcast, Samantha Salerno. It is uh, very good to have you. Thank you, Betty. I'm so excited to be here. It's yeah. um, a pleasure to be on the podcast. Yeah, it's a, your first time, so hopefully first of many. I know yes. you're a little nervous, but don't be. <laughs> well, this is going to be super fun. I love yeah. having a chat about patient care and all things related to advocacy and just getting getting the care you need. Yep. Amen, sister. Um, so, <laughs> Sam, this, um, this series, uh, we are highlighting the work that our nurses do, and certainly your role uh, as a mobile care coordinator out with your members uh, is a very important one. And I know that you had a, a pretty powerful story about a patient that you worked with and the care that he uh, received. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the story? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I had a very moving and powerful interaction with a member that I had the pleasure of working with. Um, you know, as nurses, we never know what we're going to walk into when we walk into these rooms sometimes. And sometimes we're prepared. Sometimes we're a little bit more, um, takes a little bit more finagling. But this one was absolutely a one for my nursing books. I feel that, um, you know, it's just a great opportunity to make sure that our patients are cared for, but also heard. So here we go. I had a patient that I walked into, younger um, male, dad, super cool guy once you get to talk to him and speak to him and a lot of life experience and a lot of tattoos. <laughs> it looks a little bit um, <laughs> rough around the edges, um, but super kind once he opens his mouth. And unfortunately, he was there for an infection in his arm, um, an abscess that if you looked at it as a nurse, you knew it needed to be drained and it needed to be drained pretty immediately. Unfortunately, I he was admitted over the weekend, so I did not get to see him until Monday and he still hadn't had, he had just gotten pain medicine right before I walked in and had not been scheduled for an OR slot to get this um, drained, get the abscess just cut open and drained and just cleaned out just to get the infection, you know, removed or start to get the infection removed so the antibiotics could work better. Right. And an so abscess it, is a pretty painful thing to have. Oh, my. It, it, he was yeah. in a lot of pain. You could tell um, he wasn't really, he was very stoic about it, but you could just tell as he spoke and he didn't even move his arm. Um, and it was kind of in his like forearm area. Mm -hmm. So we chatted for a little bit. I asked him, you know, what happened? How did you get this? And he said, well, I take growth hormone. I've been doing this for many, many years without any issue. I use either arm. I use them because that's where my pain is. And that's usually where you would do this growth hormone. And so I, I thought nothing of it. I said, okay, well, this is, this is good information. Thank you so much. When did it start? And what are we waiting for? What did the doctors talk to you about? And he said, well, actually they haven't said anything. And I was only just given pain medicine, uh, one pill um, earlier, right before you walked in. And I was like, oh my goodness, and you've been here with this pain. And we just got to chatting and it was very clear that there was some sort of miscommunication or maybe misunderstanding. I wasn't right. exactly sure. Some so sort of disconnect. Because this is Monday, you said, when you're seeing him? I'm seeing him on Monday and he was admitted on Saturday. 
Oh, okay. So two so days. He was there, okay. Yes, he was there two days prior to me seeing him. So I moseyed on out to the nurse's station, found his nurse, who was a very kind, younger, brand new, uh, you know, nurse who was doing amazing things. Um, my my superhero of of the day, of course. <laughs> and I spoke to her for a little bit, and I said, "Hey, what are we waiting on? What what is it that we're waiting on to get him taken care of? This wound is." Now this abscess is, is draining right here in the bed. What's what's going on? And she said, well, to be honest, she was she was so naive in terms of like just saying what's true that she said, to be honest, we're waiting on a drug screen to come back on him. A, and a, a, blo- a drug screen, a blood a toxicology, a toxicology. And I said, I'm, I'm sorry, for what purpose or do we have this? You know, wh- why do we have this? Hmm. coming back. And she said, well, we have, um, you know, they, they believe that he might be an IV drug user and that this might be from IV drugs. And I said, well, he is very adamant that this is from growth hormone. And this is not typically in a place where you would give an IV drug. Anyway, Hmm. it was more in the close to the farm area. And so we, we got to chatting while I was standing there that the drug screen actually came back and it did not show any evidence of IV drug use. So then I I walked back into the room. She sent a real quick message to the doctor saying, hey, this is what came back. I need you to come see this patient. Because as time went on, she was very agitated as well with the the way the medical system was working, right, with with this member. Is it, Sam, is it normal for uh, a blood? So they, they, when did they draw the toxicology? On Saturday? When I would was assume, I don't, I'm not sure exactly when, I, I believe it's when he first came in. He said he hadn't gotten really any blood work since he first came in. He got some okay. cul- blood cultures and just the normal. And it will take, thing. it takes two days possibly for a toxicology, a blood toxicology. Usually it, I, I would assume it's, it could be quicker, but maybe um, he's, it, it took two days in this instance that okay. at least from when I was told he got all his blood work done by the patient to standing there with her and it just resulting there was two days. So it did, did they, did they do a urine uh, drug screen? So they did a, I believe they did a urine drug screen. She said that it had come back um, again for things that were not, that it was clean for anything that could have been given IV um, okay. or any drugs in that manner. So okay. he's, it, it, I guess it was more of a double check kind of situation. So I walked in back into the patient's room. I spoke to him for a little bit. He was kind of, I don't know that he was totally aware that he was being more so profiled. <laughs> and he, it wasn't until the wound care nurse who was um, more of a seasoned nurse, uh, been around the block a long time. She came in to assess him and he was pretty agitated, very agitated. He was in a lot of pain and he spoke to her a little bit more abruptly. And so I went out to speak to her and just apologize and just say, I'm so sorry. He's got this abscess in his arm. It's painful. He just had pain medicine for the first time. Um, At this point, it was probably 30 minutes ago. And, you know, he's just having a hard time. We really need to get this drained. And she said, well, don't worry. He's just detoxing. And at that point, I had to stop her. (laughs) Go ahead. So everybody thinks, everybody thinks this guy's an IV drug user, except he's not. Except he's not. (laughs) Except he's not. (laughs) Correct. So I, I just, I came out and I was like, I'm sorry, what? I had to stop her in her tracks real quick. And I said, actually, I just spoke to the nurse and the drug screen came back and there is no evidence of IV drug use, nor does he look like he is detoxing (laughs) at all. (laughs) In so fact, much for being a seasoned nurse, Sam. <laughs> correct, correct. He was. It was clear as day that he was. He was within his right mind. He was agitated, rightfully so, for sure. Right, right. But he was in a lot of pain. So um, we just. I went back in. I talked to the, the the patient. At that point, the nurse came back in, and she said, "You know, I sent the message to the docs." Someone will be down here soon, and I said, "I want you to let them know that their nurse advocate." through their union is here. And I want, I need them to come down and speak to the patient. She said, okay, let me just send that too. So she sent a message and to the doctors who eventually did come down and I did coach, I did coach the patient on 
kind of the things to ensure that he asks and say when when the doctors come down, just routine things like when right. we'll be going to the OR, how, you know, how important is this to get drained right now? Just like things I want him to be informed in his care, right. in addition to just getting taken to the OR and cut open. With, you know, but to get but you were going to be there when the doc, when the doctor came in, right? So the doctors, I waited for quite some time. The doctors did not show up uh, for okay. probably a good hour and a half or so or more. So I actually told them, I said, just let me know. I let me know when the doctor, you know, shows up. And he actually called me pretty quickly after the doctor showed up. That was probably about three hours in. Okay. And he said, they're going to take me down to the OR tonight for surgery okay. to get this drained. And it was a sigh of relief. It's, it's upsetting that they took this long for him to get care. Absolutely. I'm thankful that he was able to get care. However, it may or may not have taken a lot longer if I wasn't there and able to explain in a nice way that their misconception was inaccurate. Was he also, and I know when you're thinking about taking a patient to the OR, they also try to limit the amount of food that they have. Was he being fed? No, he, from what I understood of him, he really couldn't even eat because his arm was hurting so badly. But when I was there, he just had um, like a little tiny cup of water. Wow. Wow, that's a two days is a long time to be in the hospital and not where they they were not giving him pain medicine. You said until Monday. No, and wow. they and they weren't doing anything to treat. In fact, when I got in there, he had like a chuck pad underneath his arm, and the and it was just draining directly onto the chuck pad. Did he feel like there was something amiss? Yes, he did. And that's actually, he was very thankful. He did not realize that I was going to come see him just like a lot of our, our members do. Yep, yep. And he was so happy when I showed up because he didn't know how to nicely or I guess effectively communicate what he was feeling to the team and to, you know, whom, whomever his nurse was at the time, who wasn't the same nurse that I had on Monday. So I'm sure it was a little bit tougher. The one I had on, you know, one he had on Monday was very understanding and just very appalled by the entire situation. And I guess the doctors that engage with him over the weekend. So so it sounds like peop, the, the clinical team was making a an assumption about him and his supposed drug use based on the physical appearance of him. Only. Correct. Yes. He had no and, symptoms. He had and an abscess. He had an abscess. That's, I should include that right. as well. So an abscess and then his tattoos. Correct. So an abscess near an area where you could right. possibly have an IV drug use, right. you know, event and okay. all of his tattoos. Yes. Wow. And and yeah. despite asking him and him saying, no, I don't, they didn't believe him. Correct. And this was, he was adamant, did not change his story. And in fact, when I walked in there, oh. it's, you know, it was very clear that he was, this wasn't, didn't look to me as he was pulling anybody's chain. It was making anything up. He was yeah. very clear and he was able to tell me from start to finish, I do this. This is what I do. This is what I've always done. And he's, he didn't, and he said it in a way where it wouldn't even sound, um, that he was doing anything wrong. Like he said, it's so innocently like this is, I don't understand why this is a problem. Like, why does everybody right. keep asking me this? Right. So well, and that was, was this the first time that he was in a hospital, you know, in a long time? <laughs> I mean, yes. In a long time, actually he avoids the, the, any doctors or hospitals. And it was very interesting because I had the pleasure of going with him to his primary care appointment post discharge from the hospital just to make Great. sure that he Great. was seen his antibiotics took you know took care of the infection all of the different things and it as soon as we walked in first question from the um, provider was so how long have you been using IV drugs wow. <laughs> and we both looked at each other and we're like I don't understand this question why does everyone keep asking this wow just based on his appearance I just that based is, on his appearance and I guess the story of an arm abscess. And okay. that was, that was the idea. And interestingly enough, he sent me a text after being able to see 
you know, the, the provider for his primary care. And he said, thank you so much for coming with me. I avoid the doctors because they always think I'm seeking something. Oh, wow. How sad. And it's heartbreaking. I, I, it's heartbreaking. I actually have an appointment, so it, which is great because I, I get to now help him get the appointments he needs based on the things that have been wrong for a long time and go with him so that they take him seriously or see or hear him, which is shouldn't be needed ever. No. Um, so, so let me just fast. So he did have the surgery. He had the, uh, incision and drainage and when did he get this? So it, it recovered, right? I mean, when did he get discharged? So he had the surgery on Monday and he got discharged on the, about four days later because they wanted to give him a good amount of IV antibiotics before they sent him home on antibiotics by mouth. Okay. And, and was his stay then smoother? Did, did you go back to see him in those four days or just wait for him to be discharged? So I actually, I didn't. And the only reason is because every day they were saying he may go home mm-hmm. and they wouldn't, they didn't tell him that he would or would not until about three or four, but I was on the phone with him every day, right. every day then, I spoke on the phone. So his discharge uh, was four days later, and then you've continued to support him through Um, this journey. Absolutely. And in fact, he's been so proactive in his own care, which has been just an an amazing thing to see that he'll send me a text and say, I made an appointment for so-and-so. And And I'm like very proud of him for doing (laughs) these things. He's on a roll now. He's going to, he he's got you. He's going to take advantage of it. Absolutely. <laughs> so, so like it, it is as nurses were like probably shaking our head, like, come on like that. If somebody, I mean, I understand you have to be somewhat cautious, but uh, you know, to not take someone to the OR for at least a day, like if you even give them Saturday to Sunday and then mm-hmm. Sunday, okay, it's a weekend, but still there's, there's really very little reason to maintain that he shouldn't have gone to the OR, particularly, you know, I mean, it's, it's a controlled environment, anesthesia and anesthesiologists know how to deal with folks who are on drugs, you know, that's, right. yeah, yeah. regardless of whether he was or wasn't even would have not been a question to take him to the OR regardless. And that right. is a kind of the, the shock that I had when I walked in because Betty, if you could have seen this thing, you would have said the same thing like this. Yeah. He didn't go to the OR the, the day he walked through the door. Ha, has there been any ill effects of his delay in care? In his, not in that his... I know of and not that he even can tell. His antibiotics did work really well. He's off of those now. Um, he has, he left the primary care doctor with a script for blood work that he just got that done. So that actually hasn't resulted yet, mm-hmm. but I, I he feels fine. He's back to work okay. and he's doing way better than he, you know, the, the area is completely healed. I saw it when we went to the primary care Good. and unfortunately also Betty in this whole adventure, they left his IV in for five days. So he got a phlebitis. Oh my God. <laughs> oh my in this whole adventure, I'm like, I'm like, God, what happened to your hand? And he's like, they left the IV in for five days. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. <laughs> I guess back in the day we used to date this site, right? Uh, yeah, you know, and I don't know that must have gone by the wayside. <laughs> oh, okay, rats. Just a simple thing. Um, so, Sam, you know, one of the questions I like to ask our guests, uh, just at these stories, as I often say, you can't make this up, but that's why we're bringing it to light. Um, so, when someone, for instance, doesn't have a Sam Salerno, and there's a patient who, maybe not in this extreme an example. Right. But if someone is being misjudged or mischaracterized because of the tattoos they have or the color of their hair, you know, maybe they walk in and it's green or pink Mm -hmm. and they feel like they're not getting the attention or the concern. What what would you like to say to them? You know, Betty, I uh, you you have to assert yourself in terms of these kind of situations. So you should never, no one should be discriminated for anything. Your past, your present situation, your hair color, skin color, your tattoos, your way of life, whatever that is. And I think people don't want to rock the boat 
a lot of the time when they go to the, the hospitals or the doctor, but you need to speak up when you feel that you're not getting the right care. And if that doesn't work, there are patient relations um, employees at every hospital that you can ask for, and they will come down when you don't either like the provider, don't feel heard, don't feel that you're getting the care you need, or you feel that you're being prejudged mm -hmm. in, in a situation and, and it is an unfair situation for you. So absolutely reach out to patient relations, ask your nurse to ask for patient relations. It's your right to have them involved in your care if they are requested. And that would be the way to get around feeling that you're getting, that you're not getting the best care that you can have. And you should absolutely always have the best care regardless of any situation. Well, and and I, I certainly concur with that. I, I think that also what I'd like to say is if on a weekend you should ask the nurse to page the nursing supervisor because absolutely. Patient, patient relations may only be a Monday through Friday gig. Right. And uh, a lot happens on the weekends. So uh, particularly in the ER. So I, I guess, uh, you know, we, we encourage patients to speak up and sometimes it's like, well, who do I speak up to? So I, I, I appreciate you naming patient relations. I say always, there's always a nursing supervisor on, there's always an administrator who may not be on site, but they can reach that person via phone. Um, so have the conviction uh, that you deserve to be treated um, with a hundred percent of empathy, compassion, and care. And if you don't feel that way, then you should, as to your suggestion, assert yourself and feel like you can. Correct. And, no, and, and another thing is stay calm for sure. I know that sometimes these things could be frustrating. And the there's a very powerful question in why, right? So I always tell my patients, sometimes you just need to ask why. There's sometimes they're not a good answer. And right. they realize that once you say, well, why am I not getting this care? Why right. are we waiting for this? Why am I not in the OR? Right. And that definitely sheds light. If it doesn't make somebody feel bad, it should, if they're not giving you the care that they that you deserve. Well, I bet the next time if he's, if, if he's, God forbid, he's in the hospital, I bet you he'll be a different, different patient. Uh, thanks to you. So Sam, nice job on this case. And thanks for joining me on this week's podcast. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Betty, for having me. This was amazing. Thank you for joining us this week. You can find the Lighting Your Way podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google, YouTube, Spotify, and Stitcher. If you liked what you heard, tell a friend and leave us a review. You can learn all about Guardian Nurses Healthcare Advocates on our website, guardiannurses.com. So until next time, find some joy in the holiday season, pet all the good doggies and kitties, and remember to tell your people that you love them. Happy holidays. <laughs>